Yes, my friends, I have cleaned up my garage a bit, tidied up my batteries, reorganized them, reshuffled them. We've got the Zeplos Mason batteries on the left. Then we've got all the batteries which have a Pace BMS. The Zeplos Polo batteries need to be separate because none of the other batteries have such a BMS. And here on the right is the vertical QSO battery with the Changpangta BMS, which we are going to replace with a Pace BMS soon. But the, the main reason for this cleanup was to get actually access to the battery shelf. Because we want to do some work on the battery shelf, we want to build an extension in a future video. But in today's video, we want to do something completely different with the battery shelf. Something I wanted to do for a while. And you may remember when we built this battery here, we, um, we fully top balanced all the battery banks, right? We had an active balancer connected and balanced all the banks to over 3.6 volts. So we gave all the BMSs the best start possible. And then after a year, I realized that the bottom battery was actually unbalanced when I fully charged the battery. Top battery were fine, middle battery with the JK BMS was fine, but this one here had always a deviation of around 180 millivolt at 3.45 volts. And at the time, this bottom battery was connected to the Heltec BMS. I wasn't quite sure what the issue was because the top battery is a 304 ampere hour battery and had the overkill BMS connected. Totally fine balanced 18 millivolt difference deviation at 3.45 volts. The middle one never had an issue because the JK has an active balancer. So perfect. And the bottom one was yeah, that was the one which gave me some grief. And at the time, I wasn't quite sure if this is related to the batteries, to the bus bars, to the connections, terminal connections, something, or if it is related to the BMS, the Heltec BMS. So I did a swap. I swapped the Overkill BMS with the Heltec BMS. The top battery was perfectly balanced. The bottom battery was not. And I wanted to find out if the Overkill is actually capable of balancing this battery again as it did up here and if the Heltec BMS is causing the same issue up here again. If it causes an imbalance of around 180 millivolt at 3.45 volts. And this swap was exactly six months ago. And today we are going to fully charge the battery again and have a look at these two BMSs and batteries and see what's going on. We are at 53.7 volts, but the battery was already fully charged. It is now 10 past four. Welcome to the off-grid garage here, guys, in sunny, hot Australia. 29 degrees again. The battery was already fully charged at around 12 o'clock at around noon. Second, second day of spring. Fully charging the battery at noon time. Energy on mass. And I wanted to keep the battery on full charge so I can make this video here this afternoon. But then I started charging the car because I was losing so much solar and forgot about it. And then it started discharging the battery. So now we have to wait until it's fully charged again. So let me prepare my screen recorder here. Then I talk to you again once the battery reaches the voltage. So we are now at 100% state of charge, 55.2 volts we can see. We should see the, yeah, the frequency is increasing now in the multi plus to turn off our micro inverter of the tilt system. So, and here we can see in the Heltec BMS in the top shelf, 120 millivolt deviation, balancing cell number one to cell number 10. In the bottom shelf, the overkill solar, we can see here as well, we are balancing cell number one to 10. Okay, not number four and number six at the moment, but you can see they are in the same voltage range as the other cells. Yeah, and this was exactly the problem I could see before. Yeah, when the Heltec was in the bottom shelf, this one had an imbalance and was always balancing cell number one to cell number 10. Perfectly balanced, perfectly balanced. So now I have swapped the two BMSs and exactly six months later, we have another look at the BMSs and can see that this cell, which was perfectly balanced before, has now the same imbalance as the bottom bat we had, because we have moved the Heltec from the bottom to the top shelf. So obviously the Heltec is creating some sort of imbalance here. And the other take from the swap of the BMS six months ago was that the Overkill BMS 
is not able to balance this battery pack again here. It is still cell number 1 to cell number 10 imbalanced exactly what the Heltec VMS did with this battery. And now the Heltec VMS has created the same chaos in this battery, which was perfectly balanced before. So you can see what the issue is here. Two or three of you guys, of the viewers, have told me that I'm charging my batteries here wrong. So in today's test, I want to listen to these three people and want to change the settings in my solar charge controllers. So we are charging to a higher voltage. Because what they are basically saying is 3.45 volts is not enough to get the balancer correctly started. It is just out of the flat part of the charge curve. We are going into this deep area. But these passive balancers of the Heltec BMS and also the Overkill BMS, they've got around 150 milliamp balance current or so. But this is not enough at 3.45 volts to actually balance these batteries. And these people are saying, well, if you charge higher, these balancers have no problem to keep your battery under control. You don't need an active balancer at all then. And I'm praying for one and a half years, two years now, that we only need to charge to 3.45 volts to get 99.7% state of charge in our battery with some time for absorption. And we have tested this so many times here with the single battery at the beginning and the Chinese cracker, the EBC A40L tester. We have charged and discharged this battery like 50, 60 times, different configuration and have found out charging to 3.45 volts is enough to fully charge your battery, 99.7%. Of course, if we go into the steeper area of the charge curve, it is much easier for a balancer to balance your pack because one milliamp of balance current in the very steep area of the curve has a larger impact than at 3.45 volts because there it is just out it is the charge curve is like this and at 3.6 volts it is like this so this one millivolt has a far higher impact on your batteries and on the balance success and one of these viewers actually said andy you've got no evidence that charging to 3.45 volts only will actually prolong the life of your battery. Or in other words, charging it to a higher voltage will actually increase the degradation and make your cell go kaput faster. So we have discussed this a few times in different videos that keeping the battery on a lower voltage actually prolongs the battery life. Because the higher the voltage in your battery is, the more stress it causes and also the higher the degradation is. Lithium ion batteries, 4.2 volts. If you charge them to 4.2 volts, you get maybe 500, 500 cycles out of them. If you only charge them to 4 volts or 4.1 volts, you get like 1500 cycles out of them. And while this is lithium iron phosphate here with a different chemistry, I think the same law applies. The higher the voltage, the more degradation we cause. But nevertheless, I want to listen to these three viewers and want to increase my charging voltage to higher. And because we are now in springtime, I probably fully charge my battery every single day now. So we can actually see what these two BMSs and their internal passive balancer will do over time at a higher charging voltage. And now you can see something funny here because um, all the MPPTs are in float mode. So they are trying to reduce the voltage to 53.6 now, but the uh, tilt system is still trying to, still trying to charge to 55.2 volts because it's running another cycle now and wants to absorb again for an hour. So the tilt system wants to raise the voltage, the MPPTs wants to lower the voltage. And now they are fighting a bit, but the voltage is slowly decreasing. And there's only 100 watts coming from the tilt system at the moment. And this is not enough to keep the voltage up. But I will help them because we are going into the CarPort MPPT solar charge controller. Because this is my master controller here. And if I change the setting in here, all the other three solar charge controllers will listen to this carport master. Okay, settings. Okay, usually we charge to 55.2 volts, as you can see here, absorption voltage. And now it's trying to lower the voltage to 53.6. So we are just going to set the float voltage now to 56.8. So we should now see all the solar charge controllers ramping up again and um, charging to 56.8. And uh, 56.8 is 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4,
3.55 volts per cell if they are all balanced. And uh, by doing this test we don't need to change anything in the BMSs actually because they can still start balancing at 3.45 volts as before. They will just keep balancing until they hit the set precision, which is I think 5 millivolt or so. Uh, I'm not sure if we can uh, fully charge this battery. The light is dwindling. With 5 p.m. sun is going down charging with 5 amps into the battery, but well, maybe this is the solution for all these batteries and all these BMSs to charge to a higher voltage. So the internal balancer of these BMSs can actually handle these batteries. And we don't need an active balancer. And charging a battery to 3.6 volts is still within the specifications for these battery cells. So there's nothing wrong doing it. It is just getting close. We haven't got enough power to fully charge. So I'm using the power supply to put another 5.7 amps into the big battery shelf. And now we are charging with 10 amps. I'm just helping out to get to 55.2. I have turned off all the I have turned off all the loads as well. And still that's not enough. 350 watts plus 61 from the tilt system. Oh wow. Okay, so I have now activated all the screen recordings for all three BMSs. And we can also see the JK BMS is a bit struggling here. 127 millivolt deviation at 56.2 volts. And I think the Helltech BMS will shut down any moment. We are at 3.625 volts. And so will the Overkill Solar BMS at um, 3.62 volts. Then it's only up to the JK BMS to supply power to our load. So I'm not even able to charge to 56.8 volts. Over 250 millivolt in the Helltech and the Overkill BMS. Wow. Let's see, I'm slowly increasing the voltage now on the power supply. Because there's nothing coming from solar anymore. We have to rely on the power supply, but it doesn't matter. It's the same effect. And the Overkill 3.64, while the, the JK BMS, the highest cell is at 3.58. And you can see here the result, what the Helltech BMS actually did to my two batteries. Cell number 1 to 10 are much higher than the other cells in the pack. Both BMSs have now turned off and we supply only power to the JK BMS, which has 162 millivolt as well. So that's not great at 56.8 volts around. And we can now see here the charge balancer of the Overkill BMS is now continuing to balance because we hit a cell over voltage protection. This is the same behavior we can see in the PACE BMS actually, because they have a charge balancer as well. If you stop charging, it stops balancing, unless you hit an over voltage protection, then they keep balancing. And the overkill, which is in fact a JBD, does exactly the same. So we have now reached a 56.97 volts. The JK is balancing 176 millivolt deviation. Wow, that is not great either. And I think this is something which gets a bit camouflaged if you only charge to a 3.45 volts. But then on the other hand, is it important to have your battery actually balanced at a higher voltage? Or is it enough if it is balanced at 3.45 volts? How much capacity would you lose if the battery is not balanced? And the major question is here, would you need the additional capacity which you would gain if the battery is fully balanced at a higher voltage. Okay, my friends, we are close to uh, sunset now here in sunny, hot Australia. Um, I have to turn on my loads again, my pumps and everything, because we are running idle at the moment with the battery shelf. I've turned everything off. So I will keep the settings at 56.8 volts for the next couple of days and see how it goes. So if you look at the Victron VIM, you will see a much higher battery voltage from now on. And this is exactly the test we are doing right now. So both the top battery and the bottom battery had over 250 millivolt deviation at 56.8 volt. And we could also see the JK BMS was at around 180 millivolt, which has now come down to 168. So let's see if we can balance these batteries at the top and at the bottom with the Helltech and the Overkill BMS just by charging to 56.8 volts for a couple of days. And if these passive balancers are actually able then to bring this all a bit down, balance them out, and maybe that is um, the way to go with the um, Seblos Polo battery, for example. Maybe the internal balancer works at a higher voltage.
What do you reckon? All right, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support. I will have one of your donated very cold spats right now. Thank you very much to these beautiful people who have donated to the channel. And until the next video, guys, um, coming out very, very soon with an update on the battery shelf here. Of course, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. That is, that is cool. That's a cool feature. Every battery channel in the Helltech BMS has got its own LED when it's balancing. So there's always a bit disco here. <laughs>